the channel and today we'll be talking about the Rogner from Kinnerton. I'll leave a link below for basically all the information you need on it. There'll be the spec sheets and all that fun stuff and just a link direct to the website for Kinnerton and all the information you need for there. So moving on from that, um, let's get right into it. General thoughts on it are it's pretty much a fantastic planar magnetic headphone. It sounds really good. Uh, my initial reaction to it though was not very promising. I didn't actually like it initially. Uh, the more I listened to it though, the more I, it, it grew on me and I start to see where it had benefits and, and negatives. The highs are very nice and crisp and they have that planar kind of feel to them where they're really separated and crisp and clean sounding. The mids were actually pretty rich. I was actually impressed with the mids, but they still have that planar crispness to them or separation. It's kind of a little bit tough to get along with for me personally. I miss just planars in general. It's rare for me to really like a planar uh, overly over a dynamic headphone in general for me, just as a preference for you guys to be aware of. The uh, lows are punchy. They have a very nice uh, detail and texture to them. They didn't have too much bleed, but they did have some of the they, they did go in. They did kind of they, they kind of flirted with that line a couple times, and they'd go over to the to the mid range a little bit. Um, and these are warm without being gooey, if that makes sense. I tried them off a couple of different sources. Uh, mostly stuck with the TT2 as the DAC. Uh, I also did a TT2 with the amp as a as a baseline as well. My first initial impression with them was with the TT2 as a DAC into a Fonitor XE, which was no bueno. That was not a fun pairing for me, and that's probably why I had that initial impression of them as not being my favorite thing in the world. Um, but moving over from that, I went in and switched it to the TT2 with the T4 out of, from ECP, which hopefully they'll be making more of those down the road. Rogner, to me, is sound wise uh, it's, it's your pretty typical planar magnetic where they just have that plucked sensation or plucked sound where it's very separated it's uh, very clean crisp um, regarding the overall sound signature the width is really nice i wouldn't say it's the widest thing i've ever heard they're obviously closed back so that's a factor bass isn't overly boomy but it is warm it does have its punchiness to it I didn't have as many issues with it once I got it into a synergistic kind of uh, chain with the TT2 and the ECPT4. The other thing that I found interesting with it is that it it kind of has that v Verite closed thing where you don't quite think you're listening to a closed back quite. Another thing that we can dive into is the different genres that I listen to. I'm just going to kind of generalize here, but I did dance electronic or that kind of kind of combined those together. That was a really fun, enjoyable. The bass really started to kind of pump up and it got real, you know, real engaging and that kind of thing. The highs weren't as they were kind of brought back down and it was more focused on the, the lows and the mids and it, it was really enjoyable that way. And then I went with jazz, classical, and live. I kind of bunched those all together. I could probably have thrown rock and blues in there too, but um, I did separate that. So jazz, classical, and live to me was where these really shined. Shine a light on how well it performs with live music or, or jazz or classical and, and hearing those instruments separation separated from the rest of them and really being able to kind of key in on them and, and hear them and then it had, a, it had the staging is good where you can actually kind of place the different instruments and what have you with say like rock and blues it's it's kind of goes back to that dance electronic where rock and blues is actually it's like a happy medium a little bit between <laughs> dance electronic and jazz classic blues so rock and blues has this nice kind of balance to it where it it kind of shines a light like the, with the classic jazz and live music but it all still has that fun engagement with that um, bass drum or like a good bass guitar what have you uh, then i went into hip-hop rap uh, r&b that kind of genre i'm kind of bunching those together and that's when it kind of went back to the dance electronica all about the 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 lows and the mids Highs weren't really too much of a thing, and vocals became more of a thing as well with the mids. And honestly, with vocals across the board, I really was enjoying the vocals, but they do have this, um, I, I noticed it a lot with planars, where the vocals tend to have that, like, it's not grain, but it has like this planar, like, 
presentation to me, and I always hear it on a lot of planars, and it's this kind of like almost unnatural like tonality to the vocals sometimes. And uh, I was picking that up with these a little bit, but nothing extreme. It was, but once I did a comparison, that's when it really started to, my, I picked up like, okay, this is where it's kind of being a little bit where I would not have a preference for it. So the things that I compared this with are my Verite Closed from ZMF, my Focal Stelia, and I basically just went back and forth with different tracks and see how they performed against each other. And for me, the Verite Closed, even though it does have that kind of a different unique signature, I, I, for me personally, I prefer the Verite Closed, which if you know, if you're not new to this channel, you probably would have guessed that anyways. Uh, the Verite Close to me is just, it's my home happy spot for a lot of, and same with the Verite Opens. Those two are my all time favorite headphones. The Verite Close against the Rogner, it just felt more rich. It felt more engaging. It felt more, I get that sub bass rumble a little bit more. You get a little bit more of just that natural tone too, to like the vocals, to everything. Just had a, that more naturalness to it. Just, it felt more real to me. Um, listening with the Verite closed over the Rogner. Not that the Rogner's not fantastic, because it really is actually, in comparison, it's just finding your preference, you're gonna have to do that. Um, with the Stelia, it was actually, <laughs> the Stelia and the Rogner actually performed very similarly, to be honest. The Rogner has wider stage, but I felt that the Stelia has a little bit more richness to it, and then the highs are a little bit more sparkly with the Stelia. And then the other factor was, was I think it's that dynamicness, dynamicness, <laughs> the dynamics driver versus a planar that to me just sounds more natural. And so that's where the Stelia kind of edged it out a little bit. Whereas the Rogner did have, I think overall though, the Rogner does perform on par or a little, maybe even a little bit better in some areas um, against the Stelia. But I do think that the Stelia was, for me, my preference. I, I like the Stelia a little bit more. Uh, across the board, but just ever so much. Like in on my notes, even I put that it's uh, the Stelia is greater or equal to <laughs> the Rogner. Um, so next up, let's dive into kind of the the, the build aesthetics and, and those kind of things with the Rogner. And the Rogner is an interesting headphone to me because it's kind of like they're taking a, a page out of ZMF's book with the wood cups. Um, they have a really nice build quality. To be honest, like the, the the little finer details of things, they, the design of the like the way that the leather wraps around the metal bands to kind of give it that nice where it doesn't have the edges and stuff like that. The overall build is actually quite fantastic. It has just a really nice feel to it. The aesthetics of this, to me, is a you're either gonna like it or not. To me, it kind of has like that kind of almost not steampunk, but it has like that almost retro look to it where it has a nice wood with the different metal parts and leather. I like the purple on it and I like how they have a little purple heart, like the little heart cut out and so it has like that really cool little details. Aesthetically it's pleasing. I'll just leave it at that. It's an aesthetically pleasing looking headphone for me. I do enjoy it. Um, some of the the cons for me though are for this, I'm not the biggest fan of the uh, headband. So this type of headband tends to have this like limp feel on my head like where it, it kind of feels like it's falling down and then it doesn't quite have the clamp force that I would like with something like these where it feels like the seals not quite there properly and that could just and that that's definitively you know a problem for me with my head shape or what have you but I've I've never really been the biggest fan of these suspension style headbands uh, they always tend to feel like they're drooping or like and they're draped over your head um, and it has like this loose really loose feel to it like I don't feel like I get as good of a seal take that for what it is that's that's my uh, con or uh, one of my not really even con it's just for me it's something that I'm not the biggest fan of so that's the only real thing with the build that I have an issue with is uh, what I think or who I think these headphones would be good for and I think anyone that likes a planar and is looking for like a top of the line planar close back uh, or semi close back, then these would be one to look at. If you prefer dynamics, I think generally you're not gonna be a fan. Um, I'd, I'd recommend the Verite Closed or the Stelio over these. But if you are a fan of planar magnetics and you want a top of the line close back, to me, 
would fit like that kind of persona. If you really like live jazz, classical, and honestly, they really did well with all the genres. Uh, they just seem to shine more with some of the more traditional uh, audiophile music. They did fantastic with hip hop and, and those genres as well. Same with rock, blues, and, and all those ones. But they just seem to have that little little bit of extra with the uh, with the jazz, classical, and live music. Um, so yeah, that's my takeaway with these: is that they're 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 pretty fantastic headphones. Uh, my initial impressions were not great. They did not have a good synergy with uh, the very neutral Fonder XC. That just did not, it was not a good pairing. Um, but once I switched them over to my ECP T4 and even my TT2 as an all-in-one, they performed much, much better and it really came into line for me and I really enjoyed my time with them. Uh, I've been listening to them since last week and over the weekend. And yeah, overall, I just they're, they're an engaging, fun headphone. And it's really up to you if it's worth it for you to pick them up or not. So, cheers, everyone, and see you on the next one. All right, welcome to the channel, and uh, thank you for joining. Today we'll be talking about this uh, Ragnar, 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 Ragnar. Ooh, okay.